Hey guys and gals, let's build the gaming tournament truck by Lego City. Set number 60388 contains roughly 344 bricks. So we're going to build this awesome thing in one sitting today. And yes, it's a daytime build, not a bedside build. And pretty much that's where we're going to start with. So the manual doesn't really tell us what pieces go where. But the build is broken down into four bags. So there will be four individual sessions in this. But we'll do it all in one city. So, let's get started. Now, I did the part exploration on this. And let's start with bag one, by the way. So I can index it. Um, I went through the parts. The parts looked, you know, like you'd find in a typical Lego vehicle set. So, we're going to get started on this today and see if we can get it done. And Because this, I believe, is the last... Well, sadly, the last city set I got to put together. And got all the big parts, and we're trying to find accessories right now. In fact, we got to put together all the accessories first in this model. And these two sets of items here, I had to pull those out of a separate bag. So technically, there's five bags, but one of them just had random stuff. So, last time we met, um, it's getting close to finishing up stuff. I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and there's our minifigure. And now I'm at the point to where I just unboxed, or not unboxed, I did just the intros to the last few videos. Now it's just unboxing and building, which I'm hoping I can get done with the majority of it by the end of the week. So, Lego sure coming out with some nice wigs in here. This is just a fro. I don't really have any fro dues, so. He's got the microphone, so he obviously must be the host. We're going to be gaming those Pac-Man tournaments. Okay. So this should be a very interesting build. So before we can even get to the big pieces, we got to do all the little stuff first. So now i got to spend time trying to find the pieces that I need to... So like right now I'm looking for that plate right there. So now I gotta move all the big pieces out of the way to make something small. I try not to do that in my manuals. Because it gets kind of tiresome. And a little mini rant here. I hate when somebody asks you to fill out a survey and it says it'll take 10 minutes. 10 or 15 minutes, and it ends up taking about 30 to 45. I'm like, wow, you know, I just want to hurry up and get it done. <laughs> and that's what it is, a little trophy of a game controller. I wish it had a print design on it. Okay, so now I think bag one does the two minifigures, a trophy, and then the front part of the gaming truck. So it looks like this vehicle could be used for something else if you wanted to. At least it's not one of those goofy manuals that just has the, the display four plates instead of just putting four by it. The old furnace fired up again, but later on this week, it's going to be in the 70s. Our, our winters out here don't last too long. I, I, I was watching the news, and I mean, this is we're still before Christmas by the time you're watching this. And I was watching, um, you know, how people are having the holiday travels. I, whoops, I skipped a plate. And you know what? This set did not come with a brick separator, so be care very careful. Um, you know, some people's flights are delayed and they're stuck at airports. I wonder how many of you are watching these while you're stuck at an airport. <laughs> and I'm like, well, at least you guys are on vacation. I'm stuck here. <laughs> I'm not working, but I'm 
you know, you can't find anybody who would want to go do anything. So I'm just doing stuff by yourself. It, you know, it's kind of gets boring after a while. But I was watching, I'm thinking, well, at least you guys are out and about. You're not stuck at home. You're going out and going and enjoying the holidays. Matter of fact, I think some people are off this week. This is a week before Christmas, by the way. So I think a lot of people are off. Lego, why don't you make a piece that fits in here to fill in that hole? I, I don't understand that. You you have all these parts, and yet you can't fill that hole. And I would have just stuck a one by one in there. Probably couldn't though, but still. All righty. My allergies have been flaring up to the point where my nose is a bit stuffed up. So. It's like these plates are slightly different colors. I don't know if you could tell on the camera. See, there's that little hole right there. I mean, what is the point of that for? You know, I always try to fill those in because it looks kind of tacky otherwise. But doesn't look like there's enough parts to build this, but maybe there is. And yeah, that big giant semi is going to have just a little steering wheel in there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Lego must really like those type of wheels. Oh, and I forgot to mention we do have stickers with this set, too. Like, those go on... They look like Nexel Knight shields, but there's only five stickers in here. So it's not too bad, it's just the stickers I have to put on. Alright. So I'm going to try to breeze through these real quick just because I'm pressed for time again. In fact, I got something else in for service today. Somebody brings me, you know, they, they get with, I can fix stuff, so they'll bring me something in for service. Um, you know, I do a lot of more of the older technology. I don't do any of the newer stuff. It's just the new stuff is just, well... <laughs> subpar. Somebody brings me an all-in-one shelf system today and says, can you fix this? I'm like, oh yeah, sure. What's wrong with it? It just doesn't turn on. Okay. Uh, only to find out it wasn't a traditional stereo system. It was something with really weird jacks on the back. Like, I don't know, like, a, like an S-video jack. And I was like, really? This is kind of funky. So I couldn't find anything in my shop to test it out, so I had to open up the case to check out the system. Only to find out each speaker in this thing was a, had an amplifier built into it. And basically the cords on the back of these speakers, if you want to call them that, were fatigued out. And I'm like, dude, it's going to cost a lot to try to rebuild these parts. And some people are hesitant on something that's a hundred dollars. Like, okay, I'll pay that. I'm like, you don't understand. I have to find the parts. These are custom. <laughs> well, this is the only sticker sheet I got here. It's asking for sticker 12. right there and there might be another sticker sheet with this I don't know but matter of fact it's asking for a bunch of stickers let's see if there's any more in here no let me check the manual real quick because this is what I got here First I had one set that was missing a set of stickers, and this one here only has just this. You know, I think that's the second time that's happened in this run of parts. I'm checking all the pages in the manual because sometimes this stuff will get stuffed in a manual somewhere. 
and I don't want to spend half the the show here finding stickers. Lego, I, I'm not a fan of putting stickers on this stuff, but so far this is the second time this has happened on the set you sent me for review, and they are nowhere to be found. First it was that Monkey Kid set, I didn't mind, but this now is... So I can't, you know, let me check around here. <laughs> I'm already pressed for time as it is, but let's spend more time uh, finding stickers. I thought that was what I found when I did the unboxing. And, yeah, I guess... Uh, I guess I had that a coming, huh? I mean, who starts with number 12 first or something? But that's all I had when I did the unboxing. This is all I pulled out. Well, show must go on. I'm not going to spend all day, but I don't think they came with them because this is all I had. I was like, oh, there's stickers. It wasn't too bad. Then, bam, it starts with sticker number 12. <laughs> this is the second time that that's happened. Now, you also have to understand, too, these are pre-release sets, so I don't may not get everything. So, like, there's supposed to be graphics in here. And when I opened up the box, that was it. I mean, I could recheck the footage, but I can probably check around here and see, but... I don't remember there being stickers in there. Yeah, but somebody sends me their shell system and it took these funky plugs to plug into the speakers that they were stripped out. And then the guy's like, oh, I spent a good chunk of money on this. I'm like, well, how much did one of these things cost? And he's like, oh, this stereo system cost me $150. And I thought, oh, you got ripped off. Um, you know, because I had my stereo my parents got for me back in the 90s. And it's a Sony. That's when Sony started taking a turn and you know it's starting to drift the capacitors are starting to, to fade and this needs sticker number one and it needs to be rebuilt but we're talking about a stereo system that's well about 30 35 years old it was a second-hand stereo, but, yep, messing with stickers again, guys. And I thought, yeah, but I'd like to get this fixed. I'm like, okay, I could find the parts. They still, they make these jacks. Like, I could redo it. I came out with a quote of like $70, and plus I got to charge a shop fee. Okay, I'll pay it. I'm like, dude. And I looked online, I'm like, dude, you could have just spent $20 more and bought a new one. <laughs> you know? They're not worth anything now. So we had to put a sticker on that. Well, maybe there is enough parts to make that. And that was the end of that. I mean, the guy really wanted this thing fixed, and it was just... It was just cheap garbage, you know, one of those ones that you get at, at a big box store. You know, I have a component system when I was in high school. Um, the only thing I use off of it now is the uh, CD player. I use it for occasionally, but most of my stuff is uh, um, solid state like MP3s and stuff. And... Okay, the spokes go on the outside. Oh, this would have almost been perfect if they had two sets of wheels in the back. This only has one set. Wow, that looks pretty cool. 
Except it's only got those on there. Maybe this is a light duty. <laughs> they would have added two wheels back here. This would have been perfect. Just modify this up and use it for anything you want. But yeah, I mean, I hope Lego doesn't ever have their quality go down that bad. But sure enough, you know, that's what it is. There's bag one completed. And yeah, um, it's pretty cool. Okay, so, so far we're missing a sticker sheet, but we have that one there. I never seen a Lego set that came with two sets of sheets before stickers. It could have been a, an error. I'll have to check the unboxing, but I don't remember ever, you know. But yeah, about that kid though. And this is bag number two, by the way. <laughs> and we are going to be building more minifigures. So, he was like 20-something years old. Young kid. Wants it fixed. And I just said, hey, you know, you could always get yourself a vintage stereo. I said, they last a heck of a lot longer. Get something from the 70s and 80s. You know, six... You know, if you, it depends. Do you want solid state? Do you want tube base? Because oh, I like the solid state modern stuff. I'm like, what kind of modern stuff with Bluetooth? And I'm like, you know, you could retrofit those old stereos with Bluetooth. Oh, we got the surprised look, so he's probably the one that's failing. Nice torso. And he's got Jada Surfer here, too. Except this is in uh, Dark Azure. And believe it or not, I had hair color like this. I'm hoping they bring out this wig in that color. <laughs> but I told him, I said, you need to get, go, look at it, go look at places like Goodwill and all them. You'll be able to get a good stereo system. And if it needs to be recapped, I do that. Oh, I want brand new. You, know? you want new high-end stuff, you better be preparing to shell out a fortune. How much did those cost? I'm like, a good, a good, a good stereo rack system? A couple thousand. And he about... He about pooped his bridges and go, oh, I don't want to spend that much. I just want something compact. I said, well, you're not going to find anything high end unless you go back about 30, 40 years. Take it to somebody who's reputable. Have it recapped and restored and stuff. And there's our two minifigures. Now, mind you, I'm on my, uh, I'm on my uh, work vacation right now. I still do side jobs. So, the guy wanted it fixed, so I'm like, okay, I actually had to go out and found, find the parts, I had a bun I had another order I had to place, I was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> 70 $75 uh, to fix something that's worth 100 So, I got it in my shop right now, it's, it's going to accumulate shop prices, a bench, uh, what I call a storage fee, um, that's only if I don't have uh, the parts. That I, I don't charge if I don't have the parts. Like right now, it's just sitting there. I had to order these two type of they what they use on the old-fashioned computer mouse. I th I thought I, I thought I haven't seen one of those in like 10, 15 years. <laughs> it's like I don't know what possesses some of these companies to use this really oddball stuff. You know, that's one good thing about Lego, though. Um, we know about reddish brown and 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 dark red and how brittle it is, but thank goodness that we don't have to deal with uh, you know oddball stuff, you know. But speaking about fixing stuff, then I had another guy, probably uh, in his thirties, brings me a stereo like a I'm trying to think, I think it was a Fisher or something like that, back from the seventies. Had a dead channel. Sound was coming out of one speaking of the side had a slight hum to it. And I actually had the parts off the shelf to repair that. So right now I have it running right now in the shop just to make sure it's not, you know, sure it's not, you know, dropping out or anything like that. And so far it's been running pretty good. And that was an easy fix as those parts are considered you know, over the you can get those over the shelf or on the shelf parts pretty easy. And 
I hope we're not making two of these. That's an interesting way to make steps. So that was pretty much about it. Well, that's pretty. That's a nice way to make some of those stairs with the grates in them. Pretty cool. So for those who don't know, yes, I do a lot of re repairing and restoration stuff. But when somebody brings me their their stereo in for repair, I just say, hey, you know, this is going to be worth it or this is not. Well, this is going to be hard to place in here. Shows it upside down, but... Maybe it goes right here. That's probably how it would work. That's a heck of a climb up that part, though. So... That was pretty much my excitement for the day. <laughs> but I, I, it's like, you know, it'd be cheaper if you buy a new one. And they're like, oh, no, no, I want I like this one. It was made probably about six, seven years ago. And I'm just like, technology day is throwaway technology. It's not like, a, like I have some, I have some pre-war radios. My, my oldest radio is a 1929. I can't remember the brand name of it off the top of my head. It's... It's a it was it's a very long radio. It's just an AM radio. <laughs> you got to plug in a you got to plug in a um, a speaker in it. Takes the globe tubes, look like light bulbs. And uh, that one pretty much just plug and play out of the box and I just had to go in and rebuild some caps. Didn't really need it, but this is from my own personal collection. And got it working. It more or less worked out of the box, but I didn't want to... I mean, I'm not going to run it every day, you know, but... It's not going to be my daily listener. I don't listen to AM radio. But I was like, man, they don't make things like that anymore. <laughs> you know, Stuff that lasts forever, you know. I mean, I kind of missed that. I think I was born in the wrong decade or something because all the good stuff was made like... Probably, I'd say probably the 80s is when things started going to, wait a minute, this doesn't go here. I'm sure it probably connects to this, but I think the 80s is when things started taking a dive. Um, now it's uh, pretty much throwaway tech. It's like buying a computer. I always get people ask me which one's better, building or buying. You know, it depends on your skill set. I always recommend them giving a shot at building their own PC. I could build it for them, but I'm like, you're going to need to learn how to build. You do it like that anyways. So just learn how to, to build your own computer. It's like Lego, you know. You just build it yourself. You don't hire someone to do it. Some people don't have the artistic ability to do it. Now, for those who know if I'm on the spectrum or not, electronics is is my obsession, you know, not Lego or anything like that. <laughs> so I'm pretty much going to go into depth on that but tech stuff. But the 80s and stuff kind of is like where they started cheapening out on parts. Like I'll have some stuff come in from the 80s that's already got uh, capacitor failures, power supply failures, because the caps are leaky. And... Well, Jay, this thing's not old. Why is it doing that? Just, they use the, you know, the wrong type of parts. Well, the old stuff, the caps leak too, but they use paper. They were, they were made out of composite materials, and of course they're going to break down with moisture and stuff. And, yeah, you know, I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> I, I can't explain it any easier, but that's what happens. Um, you know, before I do anything silly. So that was pretty much, you know, what it is. And, oh, but a lot of people, they don't want that old stuff where, like, the stereo that I use is my computer. And most of the stuff I have is, I have a, 
I have an in-house AM transmitter. It's low-powered, and I have a low-powered FM transmitter that I used. When I test radio, I can play my own music, because the radio just stinks today. And I just sit back and turn that on with the computer in here, because I have a, I have, and then I have a blonder tongue uh, modulator that I use as a transmitter to transmit television signals to my old TVs. And I watch TV on the so. Like, I could sit, plug in one of my old tube TVs in here and just do my computer work on it. I mean, the resolution's not going to be that good. And Imagine the screens on those old ones are round. They're not even 4.3. I have some Zenith portals that are 1 to 1. So there's actually an aspect ratio of 1 to 1. <laughs> and then you really won't be able to see the corners. Nothing modern anyways, but, but yeah, I'm just like, you know, that kind of thing. But that old tube stuff, ooh, excuse me, lasts forever. It's just the emissions from the tubes break down after a while from use, and then they wear out, and you have to replace the tubes. That's before solid state. And sad to say, though, old school technology is actually better made, you know. Yes, it doesn't have Bluetooth, it doesn't have satellite radio, it doesn't have a GPS, or any of this other stuff, you know. Matter of fact, I had to fix one of my own radios the other day. Uh, the speaker on it was blown like there was something wrong with it. The sound was all raspy and rattly, and I was like, what the heck is going on here? I rarely ever use this thing. And I pulled it out, thought, well, the audio amplifier can't be bad. I plugged in headphones, it sounded great, you know. So I took the radio apart, took the speaker out, it sounded like it was just blown. It was just really scratchy. The voice coil was just rubbing hardcore. Okay, fine. I just grabbed another 3-inch speaker from my stash, threw it in this radio. Oh, we get some 1x5 plates in red, too. And I put it in this radio, and it worked beautifully right off the shelf. I was like, cool. So I took the other speaker and just ripped it apart to see what was causing it to get all raspy. And the voice coil separated from the uh, from the spider. I mean, it literally separated from that, or in the cone. It was just sitting there, bouncing up and down, hitting against the. It's why it was just so distorted. And I thought, man, that's cheap. And then I looked online. That's a common problem with this radio that I have. And I was like, man, the problem about the quality. And I'm trying to think of the name. It was a Sanjean shortwave radio. Back in the day, these things were expensive. Now they're kind of like a novelty item, but I was like, you know, pearl gold 2x2 two two jumper plate. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've done is, um, you know, I, I just replaced the speaker and it works good. Nothing on the a AM FM radio. Shortwave's pretty much never to be heard of. So, I decided just to, this is supposed to have a sticker, but that's the only sticker sheet I was provided. Okay, it doesn't go there, but it goes here. It shows this here. So... In other words, you know, before anybody starts tossing out their old stuff, you're like, some people will tell me, hey, I got an old stereo. I bought a brand new one. Do you want this old one? I'm like, what are you replacing it with? And they'll tell me the brand. I'm like, oh, okay. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I don't want that old junk anymore. I'm like, yeah. They'll just send it to me as a donation. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take your old radios and your old, your old stuff. Really? You take that old stuff? I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. I don't know what those are for. So I'll take it. I'm not bashful. I'll take that old stuff. I'll take it off your hands. And I will, you know. I mean, it's like we're building a fifth wheel. kind of wish they made these type of plates, though. This is what you'd use for a fifth wheel here. Too bad they don't make these in eight stud wide form. Yeah, it shows that these go in and out.
So yeah, pretty much anyways, that's what I deal with on a side job basis. Like now, retro gaming TVs are becoming a thing now. People want old retro televisions. And they have this extra radiator grill. So I don't know where that came from, but this is also what I have here for bag two. Oh well, yeah, just send me your old send me your old junk that you want to replace with the modern stuff. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm not bashful about it. So bag three, we don't know. Let me go get that real quick. So let's see what we have in bag three and bag two. Just did the trailer chassis. Same that those don't have stickers on them. But I'm on the lookout. Now when I did the unboxing, I only just saw that little sheet, so hard to say. I had somebody the other day wanting to bring a big giant uh, Zenith console stereo for me to rig it up for Bluetooth. I'm like, well, I can easily install the module at your your residence. I ended up taking a, a drive to this guy's house. Just installed a Bluetooth module so he can plug in his phone and stuff into it. And a lot of people now are doing it. I'm thinking, dude, you could have just bought yourself an external one, but he didn't want to deal with it and I didn't blame him. So I just tapped it off of one of the tube things. It's like a little 6 volt thing and just set it in there and be like, there you go. <laughs> Some people don't want to get rid of that tube stuff. I don't blame them, you know. That stuff is pretty superior. But you get these younger kids, they don't want that old stuff. They want everything modern, and I like the modern technology, to be honest. I'm spoiled. But then again, at the end of the day, I have a 25-year-old homemade stereo amp that I built back in high school. And it still works beautifully. Use it for my computer. Had to modify it for the computer, but... And I have a couple of 3x5-inch speakers, nothing sound blaring but they work <laughs> you know? and it sounds pretty good it sounds better than what you get modern today you know and it's been in service and I haven't had anything to I didn't have to do anything to it except maybe clean the switches because mind you this is all you know potentiometer mechanical switch based you know? so I pretty much serviced that one and it hasn't failed me since not Bluetooth. I've been thinking about converting it over to Bluetooth where I can make it completely wireless, but why do that when it's still reliable today? Okay, we got some of these fist things in here. So that's pretty much what I had to deal with, though. Um, people bring stuff in and want me to fix it for them, and I'm like it's it's expensive. It's not like a restoration. If it was like you know 40 or 50 years old, you know even 20 years old is fine, you know. But when something is, I looked online. These things are like originally. Wow, this is not really that strong. Okay, so this right back here is starting to come apart. Just to stick this on here. But I'm like, people need to stop buying this low quality stuff and they expect it to last for a hundred years and I've had some old uh, what would be considered low-end technology back from the 40s and 50s you know really low-end stuff that's considered low-end back in them days and that stuff still works beautifully today just with a recap job sometimes you plug that stuff in you may get a slight hum, but you'll be able to receive radio stations, and it still kind of works, you know. Today, you have something, and you get three uses out of it, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. There's a guy I watch on YouTube. He doesn't want to get rid of his old CRT televisions. He doesn't want, he doesn't want anything to do with the modern technology stuff. Um, I'm checking for duplicates right now here. All right, so these are slightly different. Okay. So, all in all, though, and this is just something I want to make you know make clear is that you know when you buy something new today, 
whether if it's a new car or radio or stereo or whatever, television. It's not like your what your grandparents had or your parents. It doesn't last too long. Some things do, most things don't. Uh, they they do actually still make high quality stuff today. Some companies do. I gotta stick some stickers on this. But that high quality stuff though is not cheap. It comes with the price tag. And wait a minute. It goes on here. It's like that. So if if, you, if you're a young guy or gal and you want something that's uh okay this is I don't have the sticker sheet so we can't put a sticker on this you know the only thing I can suggest is either you buy vintage you learn how to repair it on your own or you hire someone to restore it for you and it would last probably another 50 years or just buy something off the shelf at a big box store and, and just be glad uh, it lasts for 10 days I uh, started a live video well, I'm doing my own private live you know so I think I was born in the wrong decade but still I prefer this old stuff I always just, when I was younger I frown upon tube stuff but now as an adult, I kind of like, I, I prefer that old technology. So this is meant to open up. So pretty much these were the same. It was just the tile color was different. Not too bad. Yeah, so I'm going to try not to bore everybody to death with tech stories and stuff. But if you're going to buy anybody something cool... Whoops, go to a junkyard, go to yard sales, um, rummage sales, and then just pick up an old stereo. It's like record players. Don't get me started on those. And there's a few guys out there that tell you don't buy the the all-in-one shelf systems today with the turntable because they will, they will gouge your records. And the, the tracking pressure, those needles on those... You know, like they make those wooden ones. I think they look like a little old school radio, but they're you open them up, it's all plastomatic stuff. You know, it's just plastic, and those things will literally gouge your records out. Don't ever use those. You know, I still have my parents. I still have my parents' old Techniques turntable. And. And I have a BSR changer too. Yeah, they're not the most high quality things in terms of technology, but they don't gouge your records and they're a lot better than what you have today. And records are expensive, like twenty, twenty five seems them go up to thirty, forty dollars, you know. I wouldn't want to gouge those. <laughs> they're expensive. You wouldn't want to do that. There's supposed to be a sticker on that one. I don't have that. So your model may have the stickers. So yeah, just there's a guy I watched on YouTube. It says don't buy those. Buy an old classroom record player. Restore it. They're a lot better than what you buy today off the shelf, and I have to agree. So these kind of pull away. Well, the back of this doesn't look too bad. Looks pretty good. Yep, yeah, but the new stuff today you cannot service at all. So, if you're ever buying this old stuff, guys and gals, or if you're young, you know, go, go vintage. Have somebody restore it. You can buy, go to a junk store. You know, sometimes you'll find those 
uh, component systems, probably from the 60s, 70s, 80s, even early 90s is still at least somewhat decent. With the proper parts, it'll last forever. And just have it restored. It'd be it'd probably be a little bit more but just, to restore it, but then again, you're going to have something that's going to last you for a very long time. That's only if the that's only if the person restoring it is restoring it correctly, not just throwing some knockoff parts inside of there. I've seen that too. Somebody will bring something. Oh, I had it restored and it doesn't work anymore. And I'll look and it's like they use some subpar junk parts in there that just even I question. And this is just hollow in there. Like that's a waste of space down in there. Wow. <laughs> that's really a waste of space. Well, so far it looks pretty good on the side. I mean, kind of sad that the stickers are missing, but I'm not going to cry over that. Does that degrade the build experience? Yes. If parts are missing, I do grade upon that. If it's just sticker sheets, it's not too bad. If it's an actual main part, that's different. These are printed. Okay, why can't this whole thing be printed? If this whole thing was like this, it was $10 more, it would be worth it no matter what. And it's just like with Lego, with, with since they don't print a lot of this stuff on here. I Me, mean, it just looks, it just feels cheap, you know. I've had even radios and stuff come in here, and it's just sticker decals for the volume control and the tuning, and you know. Okay, that radiator drill that I had, oh, there it is. It was right here in the middle, so I think that probably rolled in from another bag. So, without the stickers inside, you're not really going to know what team player is what. So, stickers are going to play a critical role in here. Okay. That's kind of ugly on the back side. Yeah, so pretty much, though... You know, I'll get somebody who, like I said, brings something in that's modern, and I've had flat screens, and only to find out it's a, a catastrophic error. I'm like, these are just junk. They're throwaway items now. A lot of people will just abandon their old stuff here. Like, okay, well, I'm not, I don't want to haul that back home. You do as you want with it, and I give them a scrap fee for it. Like, if somebody brings me their old radio, or television, I can part some parts out of it, so I just give them a value and says, well, okay, uh, since you're going to give this to me, I'll just give you money for it. Like a recycles fee. And then I go in there and take the parts out that I want. Usually speakers, some of the LEDs, and then... So I could use to fix other stuff. And... Okay, we're not supposed to slide that in all the way. And that's pretty much what it is. So some people get whiff of that and go, oh, I just take it to him. He pays us money because it's easy to do that. And then the stuff that I can't salvage, the stuff that's defective, it just gets in a bin. And then I take it down to a recycles place and have them properly dispose of that. And yes, I do know many traits. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Some people will bring stuff to me and I'm like, yeah, this is not really worth fixing. Do you sure you want to put that kind of money? Some people do. Most people won't. You know, um, This is not really considered... A, it's like my truck. I don't really consider it as a classic, but matter of fact, it's. I heard it's worth actually restoring them, so I'm restoring it. Not something I would want to restore, but if it's considered a classic now then I'm going to fix it up all right so this may have to be wiggled in a bit because the Technic pins might be a slightly different um, thickness there there we go now you can see a little bit more what I'm doing 
so far you haven't heard me complain about anything except for the for the missing sticker sheet but other than that it really hasn't been an issue well we're covering part of that up so what do these do anyways those are just meant to be curtains All right, so I have a windscreen here. I got to knock the dust off of it. This one here came in somewhat decent shape, so it didn't really have any scratches, just more dust on it. And well, it does have a small scratch right there. That's that's the thing though, sometimes you get this stuff from Lego and it gets scuffed up. It must be like a little screen in the back, like this is meant to do this. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so yeah, like I said though. If you want to get into some cool stuff, get into the tube stuff. Tubes are hard to find now. They don't they haven't made tubes in years. They still produce them in other countries, but the quality is sure lacking. And they just don't last as long. I mean nothing lasts long today anyways. Unless you're willing to cough up a fortune. I think I had to I think I had to spend like seventy dollars one time on a tube. <laughs> one tube seventy bucks. Just to restore an old radio of mine, and uh, I got it working, so I only turned it on in very special occasions. It was our old school globe tube, an audio output tube, and I just let it sit there and turn on occasions. It's made for looks. The other one, I had, I still have the original that was, it had a, it was just, the missions were so weak, it just wouldn't, wouldn't produce good audio. I keep them just for a, uh, visual aesthetics okay we may have to wiggle well that's just coming apart huh you may have to wiggle a lot of this stuff in here to get this to line up Lego should have done a little better job on putting some kind of a uh, spacer in there there we go put that back down in there so yeah there is some parts flaking off on the build And you gotta take two of these guys. It doesn't show it in the book, but I'm only assuming right here that these are facing one another. Because this one here's got the solid side. So this this type of trailer here is basically just half of it's full of air. Where for me when I build my stuff. Well, that didn't want to go in. When I build my stuff, I try to utilize. as much space as I can and all right, I must have mixed up another bag because I'm missing a 1x4 plate for this one in lime green it's supposed to go right here and there's supposed to be a plate here but I got an extra sword so yeah well let's go get bag 4 and we'll go look that up alright so here we got bag 4 and I believe that this goes in here. Sometimes parts will fall on the floor and I just have to do that. <laughs> there we go. Looks like bag four is going to finish this up. So far, I'm somewhat pleased with the build. The build experience is pretty good. You know, if I hadn't been talking about it much, notice uh haven't really been complaining through it. The only thing is, is lining this up in here and the lack of stickers, or the lack of a sticker sheet. So, well, we can't have it all, so what do we do? Just deal with it. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of the old technology I still have. Like, I have my old clock radio when I was a kid. <laughs> and so, it tells us to add 
of oh, sticker number two to this. Yeah, but this is all they sent me for stickers. I'll check a look at the box. I already looked inside the box. I didn't see anything in there. Here we go. Yeah, but once I get that room cleaned out a bit more, some of the stuff that I have, I'll be able to move more of that Lego stuff in there. I have some of it sitting in totes, unsorted stuff. Why don't you just tell me to make two of these? Probably because they're mirrored. This one goes on the other side here. Oh, I'm making sure I put that on right. Alright, let's make sure here. This one here has a lot of a lot of stickers. I mean, it just has a lot of stickers on it. But I have to grade up on that because it wasn't provided in the box. That's more of a quality control. Let's say you were missing one of these side pieces. Um, the build experience would be graded at a zero at that point because you couldn't finish the job. Stickers are a different story. You can still build the the, the creation and still enjoy it without stickers. That's why I try not to do that myself. Let's see if these are a mirror of one another here. Well, I don't have that sticker sheet, so I can't even finish that up. <laughs> okay. Jay, you're just being hard on these. No, I'm not being hard. This one obviously must be a Minecraft player, and this one's probably a whatchamacallit, because they use the orange and... I mean, that's a nice color scheme there. I bet these attach to here. So, yeah. Now you guys and gals know... The stuff that I have to deal with. <laughs> That's just a side job. Must be a must be the buzzard or something. Okay. The computers are fine, but this one's a lefty. Because we're gonna be we got a computer keyboard here. Yeah, next year I gotta go in for a physical, which I'm not looking forward to doing. That involves going to a doctor, and you know how they are. They always try to find stuff wrong with you. That's the only thing about getting older. It just... Things just get a little bit more challenging. It's not the doctor's thing. It's the price that everything costs. This is supposed to have a sticker. We don't have a sticker, so guess what? We just have to continue on with it. I've never had a set ever just not have the sticker sheet, but I've had not one but two of them that didn't have it. Okay, I'm looking for...
the other one of these okay never mind I had it there I was like where's that at no it's right there okay that's what it's looking like right there Okay. Yeah, but honestly, I'm getting tired of sitting in the house building Lego sets. <laughs> I want to go out and do something here. Speaking of, though, if you want to get, get um, an all in, uh, for some of you guys and gals who insist on getting, oh, I thought those would fold in. Oh, wait a minute, this one goes over here. Without the stickers, it's impossible to tell. It's like, well, that should fold right on in here. So do that. Okay. Not too bad. So far this is a really nice build. Not bad at all. We already did all that. Alright. I need to show you these swinging right there. It's kind of obvious. We're about, what, 85% done with this book? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Minus the sticker sheet, or the stickers for that matter, if this was all printed, this would be a solid 10. Sadly, I really couldn't finish it up, so without the stickers. If it had all the stickers, probably a 9, 9.5. Build experience pretty good. What docks it down a little bit, though, is some of the stuff just seems kind of... I was unsure of the instructions, and things seemed like they were flaking off a bit. But I can tell you right now, this is probably going to be a durable, playable model when we're done. we got to make two of these, too. And then they go on both sides, so the other side covers up the bad side. Alright. Well, that doesn't go that way. I'm not even paying attention there. I haven't even been on Discord in a few days. That just shows you how busy I have been. I used to have an ex-friend and she would get all angry if I was not on Discord. And whatever happened to her, well, it's a long story, but make the long story short, her and her, well, I don't know what to call this person, but basically we're starting some pretty nasty drama over a live stream that apparently I quit, that I stopped early or quit early because I was sick. Now mind you, this is before... Okay, that's how it closes up. That I had to stop before my hours up because of I was sick, I didn't know what it was, it could have been COVID, don't know. And all right, we'll close these up and flip it upside down, and then we're going to proceed on here with these things. And oh, and by the way, I received all my Lego for the year, <laughs> so no more Lego packages for a while. Wow, we had those big monster tires, and look how dinky these little tires are for the for the trailer. Seriously, I mean, 
Okay, Lego, I don't know what we're doing here. Uh, I mean, the build experience is pretty good. This, but this is probably probably one of the weirdest builds I've ever seen in my life. Even the rims don't even match. I think they would have just used black or whatever for these, or maybe pearl sewer for the other ones. Let me put that last tire on here. And it slipped upside down, and this piece goes on that right there. See, those wheels are kind of tiny for that, and they're that high up too. I don't know, I mean, I think we're missing something here. Oh, I am, I'm supposed to put some things at the bottom here. I noticed these things were kind of protruding out. I bet they're just used for stabilizing this thing. Just seems kind of odd to add these here. Yeah, I mean, second time this has happened, and no, I'm not hiding them or anything like that, because I can just easily rip them off the stickers. Okay, now it's much better. Yeah, so far, the build experience is pretty good, but this build is just kind of weird. I mean, it just... Must be an antenna. We're going to put a helicopter on this thing. I don't know what we're doing here. We got this nice transparent green windscreen. That's what it does there. Pretty cool. Probably the timeout chamber. We don't know yet. I mean, these little wheels back. I mean, look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to have fun with this one. This is. It started off pretty good. I mean, this, like, here, I needed two wheels. This is okay, but. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just. It's not that it's boring or anything. So, I mean, the build experience is pretty good. It, we don't know what they're doing here. So, this is like a puzzle. We don't know what's going on here. Oh, and these are supposed to hang over. Do I actually have to get up and get a brick separator now? Oh, yeah. I slept like a good solid nine hours the other night. Well, today. Last night. Okay, let me just take all that off. And it felt pretty good to sleep in. Still got to get that last Christmas shopping done. I already know what I got to go down and get. I know it's there. I just got to go down and pick it up. And get that out of the way. I think today is the last day that you can ship all your stuff out before... Uh, you know, to get it in time for Christmas. Okay, recording. <laughs> okay, and then we just add this one here. What is this, an Xbox controller? That's what it looks like. Different colors and stuff. I'm not really into playing video games. Minecraft's probably about the only thing. I'll play some Fallout or something, but I... I just can't get into video game stuff that much anymore. That's going to cause a lot of wind drag there. Maybe that's a satellite dish to, to, to call all the gamers. We don't know. And of course, you have to flip this up here and input these stickers. That's what it looks like. This is Dungeons and Dragons. And then the little trophy goes in here first. Well, how do you even open this up there? It would be better if I do it like that. There we go. When I do the tour, I'll just leave the trophy in the truck. Okay. 
you think that would have been printed at least. I thought that was the timeout chamber. And then that's it. And that's what we have left is a bunch of tiles and plates. Not too bad. And now since that is done, let's take a look here. We have one extra tire. I guess it's the spare. And this is essentially what it looks like here. And this right here. I don't know what this is for. I wish they'd tell us what that is. What it does. Alright, I may have to censor part of that out. <laughs> I think I showed something that shouldn't have been shown. Alright, let's take a look here. And we got an extra sword. So this goes like this. Okay, so obviously that works pretty good. It just sits on there too. Okay. Alright, so it's probably... What you do is you fold this one out. So they have one on the other side here, I guess, to hide the ugly side. Matter of fact, this almost looks something similar to what you'd see uh, the flag mobile head unit from Knight Rider. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> Alright, and what we do here is we could set our players in here. So we'll just set them in there. I could leave the players in here when I'm doing this t review. doesn't really matter. To make this a quickie. Reviews don't need to be lengthy. These need to be lengthy because they are... Um, it's a live build, it's a live notes. Let's see here, I gotta pull these out here. You gotta be careful. I wish they kinda made this a little user friendly when you get put the figures in here. Raise up their hands a bit more. Of course the seats have got the studs on them too. Okay, I got her in there. This guy here is barely hanging on. Yeah, there's not a lot of uh, finger room in here for bigger hands. You can see I'm having a hard time. So you're going to have to make sure that their hands are up about that much. And just kind of gently press them down on the seat. There we go. And so, basically, you got the host. It's like he could just stand here. I think this is one spectator, so obviously this is probably not a really well-known game here. Or she could be the truck driver, too, but I think he's the one that drives as well. And basically, you come back here, you have to open up this other guy just to move these tiles in the back. You could probably barely see it, but if those had stickers, you'd know. I think it's meant to for action in the back. Okay, I'm gathering what this is here is what they see on these monitors. Okay, so let's take a look in the manual here because we don't have the stickers and I'm going to take a look at the screens here. Yeah, this is what this is here. This right here is probably what they see on those screens. And that's essentially what it is. So basically, it's for the audience to see what's going on here, what they're playing here on the screens. So that's pretty cool. So the build quality, I'd say, was really good on this one, except for some things are kind of questionable, but the instructions were easy to follow. Missing one sticker sheet. Other than that, it's not too bad. Um... Uh, play value. It looks like you can play with this. I mean, does it have good play value? Yeah, I mean... I mean, I'd say this is more of a display piece than for play value. You really can't... I mean, you could, of course, have this thing go down the road, which brings the question, is it city-friendly? Yes, it's, it's probably about eight studs wide at its widest point from here with these things folded down. So, yeah, this would be perfect for a Lego City. Um, 
So for play value, yeah, it's it's okay. Build experience is pretty good. Build quality is okay. Some of this stuff just seemed kind of unstable, like that piece back in here came apart. We have this back here too. Which is probably extra props. So, excuse me. Not too bad. It's a very relaxing build. So I'm sure if you had the stickers that go up here, and matter of fact, better if they were printed. I understand they probably put stickers in here because this right here would be probably be hard to silk screen this in. I've seen silk screen machines. I'm thinking about investing in one. And all the ones I've seen only print on flat bricks right now. <laughs> what I could use. So. I'm not sure um, if I could print my own graphics on stuff like this, but for me personally, this is a really good set. Um, like I said, not a lot of play value. It's pretty good. Could this be dropped in a city? Of course. Could you make a mock out of this? Or you can definitely improve this. I mean, look at the wheels. This is just if there was another set of wheels here, would look good. This would look more beefy, but. This looks like something to tow a trailer about half the size. This is kind of dinky. <laughs> Little wheels and stuff. So, I mean, it's an interesting build, but it just doesn't really, I don't know, it just doesn't make, it's just something about it. I just think it doesn't really make any sense here. So the build started out pretty good, and then this is the end result. And um, I, I mean, it's interesting. It's pretty cool. I understand the theme and all, but I just don't understand why why the designers picked some of the stuff the way they did. I don't know. I'm kind of puzzled. But nonetheless, though, this would make still make a great uh, Lego set for uh, a city, you know, to drop in. It's a good space filler, a good display piece, but for play value, eh, I'd say it's probably average. I'd say this set probably... At the end now, probably about an eight and a half, not too bad.